What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Plus Added Time here on Project Dits. As always and every week without fail, my name is Europa League Nathan Greenaway. <laughs> and it's the Champions League of it all. The big dance, Dara Gibbons. Oh, just living up my Tuesday and Wednesday nights. What do you think of the big <laughs> dance? Do you like that as a nickname? You're the big dance. Um, I'm not a huge fan, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'll <laughs> stop you there, buddy. Um, yeah, but Nathan, how are you getting on? You, to be honest, something's been annoying me, Dara, all week. Every single day, minute of every single day, I've been thinking about it. I need to know the answer to your to your riddle. Ooh, you didn't work it out, is what you're telling me. I did not work it out. I'm a failure of a man. Yeah, well, you said it. Uh, so <laughs> the question was, the only player, of course, playing the World Cup, Champions League, Europa League, all four English League divisions and the Conference Intertoto Cup. And the answer is Steve Finnan. Oh. A bit of a, you know, a bit of a rogue shout. He wouldn't have thought it, I guess. You, you got know, any interesting Steve Finnan tidbits for us? I, funny you should say that. <laughs> I've got I've got one story that I always always remind me of Steve Finnan. It was the tenth anniversary of the the Istanbul game because we were such a big club at the time. We had to you know make a big deal out of this uh, celebration, <laughs> and um, th- you know like all the players from the t- from that squad were there at the event except for one man, Nathan. Who was it? Was it Steve Finnan? It wasn't. It was Neil Mellor. No, yeah, it was Steve Finnan. <laughs> he, um, he basically he just like kind of disappeared. Like you never see Steve Finnan on the telly. Never. You never hear him give interviews or anything. He just kind of disappeared, and he did some like um, he's doing like a building, uh, sort of company, which is a bit weird, and um, no one could get in touch with them. And then there was an appeal that started on Twitter, hashtag find Steve Finnan. <laughs> and they found him. He was living in living in London doing this building firm, yeah, which I was very sad to find out. Uh, went bankrupt and he's actually now selling his like most possessed items, which I thought was a bit bit sad. It is a bit sad. You know what? Yeah. We're gonna re- we're gonna reach out as a podcast and try and get Steve Finnan on. At some point, you know what? That's the one thing I want. If nothing else comes from this podcast, I want to meet Steve Finnan. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm saying it now. <laughs> oh, but we should probably talk about some football, and we're actually going to do something that we've not done yet, which seems weird. And it's not a revolutionary idea, it's simply just talk about Manchester United. That's true. That's true. Have we really not discussed Manchester United? We did that episode where everyone got to know me, so we talked about past Manchester United, but as a present-day club, I feel like we have neglected them a a little bit, and that is partly, my it's massively my fault. Well, you know, Nathan, I bring them up every chance I can, and after Tuesday night, (laughs) I was definitely bringing it up to you this week. Yeah, I felt like this this was going to be a much more passionate uh podcast before uh, for a bit of context we are recording mere hours after the manchester derby uh but, but before liverpool play because liverpool play tomorrow at time recording so there's not gonna be a lot of liverpool chat this week uh, apart mm-hmm. from the fact that i found out not long ago that the one liverpool player still in my fantasy league uh team uh Di- diogo jota uh, isn't going to be playing nope he so, has cheers picked- Dara. He's picked up a knock, which, you know, Nathan, you know how knocks work. He could be out for one day or he could be out for two years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, but we might as well talk about Tuesday. This is going to be a tale of two halves. Ooh, uh, I'm just going to sit back, chest out. Nathan, take it away. <laughs> so, obviously, just for context, the Leipzig performance, I'm not angry about i am more angry at the fact that the one thing that i felt like was going to come back and cost the club and the champions league has uh which is that embarrassing performance against besiktas that's it's, it it's it's not the psg game you lose to psg any club in the world could lose to psg um if it's psg's day i feel like leipzig they are top of the bundesliga uh they did they drew against bayern they're now top by right instead of on goal difference after bayern Bayern's humiliating draw to Union Berlin. My favorite earlier team. Today. Yeah, the best team ever. Yep. Whose record transfer is 1.8 million euros and have won Loris Karius 
on the books. They do, they do. That was that was going to be my link into them, but you kind of kind of touch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so losing to them, despite thrashing them five nil earlier, it's not the worst thing in the world. I feel like that's not too bad either. But it is just a Besiktas performance really I'll, annoys me Nathan, more. Nathan, I'll stop you there. Istanbul, Besiktas. Okay, sorry. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, Istanbul, I'm just going to call them. I'm just going to call them Istanbul. Uh, that's that's it, really. That At that level, you can't be performing like that. And this season, everyone kind of jumps on Oli and United and calls us inconsistent. We've not been that inconsistent this season. Like it's not it's not a terrible inconsistency like last season. We're a bit more composed. Like, yeah, we lost to Arsenal, but then we haven't actually lost a league game since the draw against Man City. Uh, we will get into it, but we should have won today. Yeah. And uh, but uh, it it just is that thing against Istanbul was just embarrassing. And there's some other decisions across across the other games that are questionable. I think Fred against PSG. Why did you not get taken off it? Yeah. I think you didn't need to be a football coach to see that Fred was boiling over. Yeah. And he should, he should have been sent off before he was sent off Definitely. by the letter of the law. So, and, but the way we started against Leipzig was terrible. Like, they are a very fast-paced, attack-minded side. You know what's coming. You don't, again, you don't need to be an expert to realise they're going to go all guns blazing. Yeah. That's what they do. That's the only thing they've got. They're not amazing defensively, as they showed in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> and as they showed against us in the first match, where we thrashed them 5-0. <laughs> like, yeah. They're not great defensively. and But we started off like we were half asleep. Yeah. I'm well, not a... even, even the formation you picked, you had five of the back with two holding midfielders. Right, That should not be conceding. No, it shouldn't. And Full stop. Yeah. It's and there's some things there where you can't just point to Ollie on the touchline. He is a bit of an easy target, like because he he's not a big maverick in the in the world of management in terms of name value or things that he's kind of achieved as a manager. But some of the defending is criminal. It was, oh. yeah. And that's you can't. What's the manager meant to do when? Like Harry Maguire is just having a fucking meltdown like, <laughs> on the pitch, or it's just it's not great. I'm not a fan of Luke Shaw at left centre half. It did work last season a couple of times. Yeah, like starting Luke Shaw and Brand. It was Brandon Williams instead of uh, Tellers who we got this season at wing back, and it, it actually worked. But he's not he's not filling you a confidence, Luke Shaw, at any point saying that. When we get to the to the derby today, he looked pretty good. <laughs> Throughout, he was he was he was very good actually. Uh, but um, you just um, what was I going to say? The fullbacks on that night in Leipzig, you had Aaron Wan Bissaka, who has been pretty consistent all season. You know, he's a he's a pretty good defender. He he was, I thought, terrible against Leipzig. I thought he was absolutely brutal. I don't know what was going on. He almost seemed to. For the first goal, the ball comes over and, you know, there's five United defenders at the back, but they're, like, all camped, sort of, like, like not out wide. They're all, like, very compact to get, in the words of Rafa Benitez, <laughs> very compact uh, in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> they're not pushed out wide. It's almost like, you know, he's, like, protecting Harry Maguire, in a sense. I felt the fullbacks were very pushed in. They need to be pushed out further wide to deal with Leipzig's yeah. like wide threats, especially with Angelin Angelino. Yeah, Angelino has been he, even in the Bundesliga, he's been unbelievable in a, in an attacking sense. I'm not convinced yeah. about him defensively, and that's why I feel like it's one of those games where he decided to go very defensive because all we needed was a point. Yeah. And but you you can never play for a point. Like if you if you set up to play for a point and you concede, it's kind of all's lost yeah. because you set up in such a way where. Aaron wan I think, is a fantastic defender. Defensively, yep. most of the time, he is very hard to get by. He's amazing at tracking back and getting a tackle in. Everyone's seen, like, montages of him making last-ditch last tackles and everything like that. Going forward, he's incredibly average. Like, he's got a hell of a lot better over the last year. Yeah. But he's not the full-back 
that's going to get you back in a game when he's the only wide option you've got. He's sort of, yeah, he's, well, the first thing you want from a fullback is, you know, the ability to defend. That is the primary job. But obviously with today's game and how football kind of works these days, you need to have more about you going forward, mm. don't you? That's why I think he is Nathaniel a Klein, yeah, Nathaniel Klein never really worked out in Liverpool because Klopp had a certain vision in his head of what he wanted. And that was not the Nathaniel Klein. <laughs> Weirdly, like Aaron Wan-Bissaka would, would absolutely f- be thriving if he came in under Jose. Yeah. Jose would have absolutely loved him because he's not... Now, I'm not comparing him to Ashley Cole, but he is an Ashley Cole-style style fullback where going forward, he's a little bit average. He can swing and across now and then. But what he's actually excellent at doing is defending or slotting in at a three and letting the other side, the right back in Ashley Cole's case, bomb forward. Usually yeah. you would see Ashley Cole hanging back and it would turn into a three at the back at Chelsea. Like, but I mean, wan he is getting a bit better going forward, but he was dreadful. Yeah. He might as well and, not have been on the pitch at times. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it wasn't just wan I felt in general you were, you know, not great. But again, with the, you know, the five defenders, the two holding midfielders, Leipzig were even, even through the middle, they seem to be getting through like ridiculously easy when you've got Matage and uh, Mick, <laughs> Mick Sauce, Mick Sauce. In, the, uh, <laughs> in the midfield. I'll get that in now. It was, in the midfield. Yeah. I, it just was nobody's day. And, and I think, I, I don't know whether it was arrogance of thinking, well, we only need a point, we'll be fine. Or whether it, because I can't see it being unexpected that Leipzig were going to come out all guns burning because they needed a win. A draw wasn't good enough for them. Yep. They had to win. And we made everything too easy. Our set piece defending was atrocious. And it just was a terror, apart from the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, before we get to the, you know, the good times for you, Nathan, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, bit back to the, you know, the dull and miserable. Um, I'm not blaming Oli Gunnar so Well, I guess I kind of am, actually. Um, but I want to question him on some of the subs that he made. Mm. So he, he took off um, Alex Tejas and Luke Shaw, which you think, OK, fair enough. He's, you know, going out trying to win the game in an attacking sense. But then he so he takes off two left footed left backs and he ends up bringing on a 20 year old right footed left back. And Brandon Williams, mm. that I didn't really understand. That didn't make much sense. Um, I think uh, if we take these one at a time, I think Brandon Williams. Yeah, he's not experienced. He's very young. He when he first came into the side last season, he looked an absolute revelation. Yeah, He looked unbelievable at times. He drops off the ball a little bit as you kind of young players tend to uh, when more begins to get expected of them. But yeah, he's not the option. And I know for, I know Martial and Cavani were, were not available, but there's got to be more options out there. Like surely you got to throw on something, something else better than that. Like, you reckon, why... Would he not just throw on like Dan James or Audio Nagalo? You know, they, they need, they need a goal. Last you would have, minutes. yeah, you would have thought Agarlo would, or more than Dan James, because I think Dan James is excellent on the counter, and by that point we were kind of yeah. more the attacking side. So Agarlo, with his ability to hold up the ball, a little bit better. But I think he just doesn't trust uh, Dan James or Agarlo. And well, some of it to, is with reason for he me. He's a start, Dan James. I remember he started against Chelsea in the league. Yeah, I think it's kind of more needs must like i i like dan james i think he's actually a good player like he's yeah. not he's not going to be yeah he's not going to be a goal scoring winger he's not going to be getting you 15 to 20 goals a season that might change but that's not his game his game is generally he's in pace is unbelievable he's great on the counter and he's going to stay wide that's where he's most effective but his end product is a little bit missing he's a little bit of a fear walcott at times <laughs> and um, which is a bit unfair because Walcott did have some good goal scoring seasons, but <laughs> you you all know what I mean with the with that. So Igalo, that he was bought, he was as as good as he was for about one game, and his hold up play against one of the, in one of the Manchester derbies last season when he came on for the last kind of five minutes was outstanding, and it kind of kept us the ball a little bit in that match, but 
Yeah. <laughs> he's not he's not the greatest option in the world. Yeah. <laughs> no and disrespect to the guy. I'm sure we'll get on to uh, this man later on uh, in the next game. But Donny van der Beek coming on at half time again. Like would you not just start him <laughs> at this rate? He is clearly an incredibly good player, but I, I as part of me just thinks, well, what in his performances thus far makes everyone think that, oh, he has to be starting? I think he just, like, why isn't he getting a chance? Why is, like, McTominay, Matt, and uh, Pogba, who we'll get on to in a second, why are these players yeah. all starting? Yeah, and we will definitely be talking about Pogba. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, I think McTominay, Van der Beek and McTominay are two very, very different players. Yeah. Like, Van der Beek is more kind of uh, more attacking. There was like several interviews where he was talking about how he, he wants to play ten. Well, the trouble is the guy playing ten is undroppable. Like that, and yeah. that's the thing with Pogba. Apparently, the same. Although Pogba doesn't say it himself because he's a fucking coward. But um, <laughs> the thing that old oh, Pogba wants to be playing in his attacking midfielder. Well, so the guy is ahead of you. You got to play better than the guy is ahead of you, and you're not playing better than the guy that's ahead of you, and. People saying, "Oh, we should be given the chance." Well, why? We need to be winning games, and the guy who's in that position isn't droppable. Now, the only option is if he wants to, if he has to play attacking midfield for whatever reason, is to start playing with two attacking midfielders. Well, that would mean dropping a striker. And um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, oh, it's all and a little bit of a mess there. So he has to be playing deeper, and I just think McTominay does a very different job. Yeah, the I just. Two last things. You know, I'll finish on the subs first. Uh, you're you, at the at this moment in time. You're three 0 down. Twenty minutes to go. Uh, you know, you need you need to uh, score three goals. Uh, he took off Lindelof and Wambasaka. Brought on Twanzibi and Fossi Mensa. Run me through that one, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, Lindelof. I've got no idea because he played this weekend. But from all indications, before the game, he was having a back problem. So maybe it was that. I've got no idea what to say about that one. Uh, Harry, Harry Maguire, probably. Yeah, probably. But uh, Wambasaka for Fossi Mensa, no idea. No, can't even. I. No offense to Fossi Mensa, and he does look useful sometimes. He's play, started a couple of games. He looks actually better going forward, but he's nowhere near as good defensively as Juan yeah. But I actually just don't have a lot to say about him. <laughs> I like, and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean I just don't really know anything about the guy. I remember he yeah. went on loan. Remember he went on loan to Palace. Fulham the last time they were oh, Palace Fulham was it? As well, Fulham and Palace, I think. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. apparently he might be signing a new deal. I think his contract's up at the end of the summer, um, this season. So apparently Ollie wants to keep him. Don't know where his best position is. Sometimes he plays right back. Sometimes yeah. he's playing centre half. Sometimes, if you're on FIFA, one of his positions is defensive midfield. Never seen him play there in my life. So no <laughs> idea. Uh, maybe I don't know. He's just a just he's a Dutch Paddy McNair. <laughs> that is that. I want that on the t-shirt. Um, <laughs> just a Dutch Paddy McNair. <laughs> Paddy McNair. That, I don't know where he's pulled Paddy McNair from. Um, <laughs> well, if you go with the third goal, who are you blaming for it? Are you blaming Maguire or De Gea? Both. They're both that's professionals. Perfect. Yeah, they're that's both a good answer. should have a better attitude to know what they're doing. They both have been in those positions countless times. Like, come on, guys. You're both to blame. It's not one of them. It's just, oh, a mix up of communication. There shouldn't be mix ups of communication at that level. Yeah. That's Sunday League stuff. Like Sunday League is where you're shouting at your goalkeeper, but your goalkeeper leaves it because he's not sure what you mean because he was too hungover. Like, <laughs> there's not a. It, it's it's simple. It's simple stuff. It's yeah. and that's not as the subs. I agree, uh, they're questionable, uh, but things like that. What are you, you just, can't what are you doing? That, can you? you can't yeah. you can't account for that. That's if that's going to happen, you just got to look and go. What am I meant to do? Yeah, and you you do get back into the game. I mean, in my opinion, it's a very soft penalty. <laughs> um, <it's laughs> yeah, very... we had a, we had a we had a more solid penalty disallowed today than we did. Yeah, than this actually, one. <laughs> that's true. And then a header from a corner. So you know, it's not exactly this like you know, it wasn't um, like this masterclass that helped you get back into the game. In my opinion, it was two very 
Yeah, it's, well, it's exactly what I was talking about beforehand. We know we know that Leipzig don't defend well. Like yeah. for all the for all the love and kind of anticipation for his future that Uber Meccano um had had he, he didn't play against United, but he'd been dreadful lately. Like Canate as well, I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. Um has looked lost at times. Like and they did look more solid. But I really just felt like if we had attacked, if we had played the formation that we played today against City, against uh, Leipzig then, and just attacked and had a go the entire match, I really think we probably would have won. Yeah. And it's just, we we aren't good enough defensively um, to play formations like that at the moment. Yeah. We were at times last season and we pulled it off. But when we just played four at the back, simple stuff like we did today, and we actually played a diamond in midfield today. And I think City would have needed like a royal appointment to score. Like they would have needed the Queen to come in and go, No, they are having a goal. Like the <laughs> City they had a couple of I, I don't, they had a couple of like half chances, a couple of good shots, and Raheem Sterling made a couple yeah. of weaving runs. But other than that, nothing clear across at all. No, no, no. Nothing, nothing that nothing that's going to make the match of the day highlights. Yeah. No. But one th- one thing I found is, you know, when United are like going behind by these scores, I always, you know, as a rival fan, I always think they're going to come back yeah, into it. And never, we've got, we've never got... based on the ability of your team, just because no. of the history of Man United. It's That's happened it. lately. We saw it against Southampton. Yeah. Recently. Now part of that is because Bednarak scored. That... <laughs> That's just what happened. <laughs> but it, it's happened lately. It happened against West Ham again. We went one nil down. We looked completely out of the out of the yeah. out of the match. And Newcastle we... earlier on the season. Yeah. Newcastle earlier in the season. We got we are a much for some reason we have been slow starters. And there is history to that uh, under Fergie we were a little bit notorious for quite a few seasons of just not bothering for the first 10 minutes <laughs> like and, we and were then always, Mikado yeah. would score in the 94th minute every yeah. game of every season it seemed, it seemed yeah. yeah I just think you can't although we do have a history of that and a very recent history of that you can't bank on that and uh, as a fan yeah I do I've actually I, I was playing it cool to Dara in our private messages um, but I actually thought we were going to win today at half time. I was like, I'm well in for this. Like, yeah. we are winning this. You seemed uh, like you were going to. You're the better did. team. Yeah. But okay, against Leipzig, to bring it back, because I'll keep trying to pull it forward to something more positive. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the subs were wrong. The formation was wrong for the players that we got. And I think if Oli, and he does like uh, dipping into this three or five at the back or whatever it is. If he wants to play that formation, I don't know why he let Dallo go out on loan because he's an attacking fullback. And he's, I know he didn't really get a kick last season, but he's the exact player that he seemed like he'd want. I don't know why it's Luke Shaw dropping to centre half. I feel like now I don't see them train, obviously, so I'm kind of pulling this out of thin air. But I feel like if you're going to drop anyone back to centre half, it would be Wan Bissaka to right centre half. And why, why would you do that as opposed to Luke Shaw? Because I think wan is a much better defender. defender he anticipates yeah. the game a lot better. He's great at tracking back. And um, and I just think he reads things a lot better. I just don't think Luke Shaw... He, I don't think there's another team, uh, another elite team across Europe that would be starting Luke Shaw at left centre-half. <laughs> <laughs> and I well, mean, I would have respect to Luke Shaw. He played very well today, but he's a better left-back. Yeah, well, that is... <laughs> so why not... Is that no, it's a very simple thing of playing people where they should be played. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I am. Um, I reckon. I reckon that'll work. But will the final sub I want to talk about, and I'm sure this will move the conversation on slightly, was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer bringing on Paul Pogba, the man who the night before, which is you know was probably your biggest game of the season up until now. Uh, well, actually, Paul Pogba didn't come on to it. Paul Pogba's agent, uh, Mino Raiola, came out. Yeah. Why didn't Paul Pogba speak for himself, though? Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He's, uh, in the words of Troy Deeney, he doesn't have the cojones, I don't think. He's a coward. He, um, 
it, yeah, it's not. It's, it wasn't looking good, was it? I thought he, that would be him dropped for the game. I didn't think he'd play, let alone. I didn't think he'd make the bench burn, let alone come on. Yeah. And I, I think it looked very bad for Solskjaer bringing them on, only like 24 hours after that incident. I think, um, and I don't want to, not going to speculate too much, because I think a lot of this stuff is, Paul Pogba clearly speaks for his agent. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like speaking publicly. Whenever he does speak publicly, it's like the France thing, when he said, oh, coming to France, playing for France is like a breath of fresh air. You're like, yeah, it's because you've got N'Golo Kante next to you, so you don't have to bother defending. And it's like, not that you do anyway most of the time. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it is just, it's, it's very Mino Rayo, though, isn't it? The, not a lot of his players speak for themselves. The only ones that really do are Zlatan. And uh, Hal, Haaland does a little bit as well, but he tends to put his foot in his mouth, doesn't he? So, um, But the, the only one who speaks for himself is Zlatan, because Zlatan is Zlatan. And he's, a, and he's a very good public speaker. Yeah, he, has, he has history of doing this. I remember, um, you know, Gianluigi Donnarumma at AC yeah. Milan broke through as a 16-year-old keeper by the age of 17. Raiola was turning down a new contract from Milan because mm-hmm. he wanted to move him on to a. Uh, he just wanted a payday, essentially. That's what it is, really, isn't it? Yeah, and He's I think not... I think Gary Lineker said it best on Twitter. Very, very, um, in very kind of short words, someone asked like, "How much are United actually going to get for Pogba?" And Gary Lineker said, "Not as much as agent." Like, <laughs> and that's the truth for the matter. And for Pogba, I don't know what got said privately. Oli said that look, Pogba still wants to try very hard for the team and for all uh, to say something nice about the guy, he played all right today. He looked pretty good. He was bossing the midfield a little bit at times. He actually yeah. looked like he was a little bit up for the match yeah, for once. But um, So just... he's got to pull the compliment back. He can have it, but I'm taking it back immediately. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to throw him under the bus straight away here from uh, Raiola's uh, quote. Uh, quote, Paul is unhappy at Man United. Uh, he can manage to express himself like he wants to and like people expect him to. He needs to change team. He needs a change of scenery. He has a contract that would expire in a year and a half, but the best solution for all parties is a transfer in the next window. Yeah, and I think that is it. I think this is it. Uh, the only problem Mino Raiola has right now is that there are not a lot of sides that A, because apparently United have slapped they said he can leave in January. This is rumour at this point. That's not um, happening. That he can leave in January for 50 million quid. And uh, and Juventus are really the only club that are, that anyone really thinks has any interest in the guy. Because the problem raiola has got is that no one has any cash. There are very few clubs right now that have the sort of cash required to A, pay a fee, and B, pay your insane agent fees. Yeah. And Juventus, according to to Fab, how do you say his name? Fabrizio. Yeah, Romano. Yeah, Romano. Juve don't have a lot of cash, and the only way a deal is really going to happen is a swap. So it really, Pogba doesn't have a lot of options right now. The move to Real Madrid, Real Madrid didn't buy anyone in the summer because they yeah. they don't have the money. They're they're having to bank on Zidane working a bit of a miracle with a very aging squad and a lot of youngsters that have not developed developed how people thought they would Barcelona have pretty much no money at this point definitely not <laughs> so PSG obviously have money but they're constantly struggling with financial fair play and we can only imagine what their wage bill is yeah do they want to add Paul Pogba to that and not and this isn't a Paul Pogba that is playing outstanding football it's not it's a very average yeah the last and, like the last, you know, two seasons, this season and last season, has he really done much? No. People always point to, they say, oh, well, look how he played in the uh, Manchester derby. But that wasn't even last season. That was the season before. And that was before he won the World Cup, which in itself was two and a half years ago. <laughs> yeah, and did he win the World Cup? He was part of the team. And no. Like, but he was just France, tapping with the trophy, so he must have done something. Yeah, and Deschamps always talks about how at United they don't play Pulp in the right position. No one has, no one in the world can tell you what Paul Pogba's correct position is. He's played at 10 for United before. He's played at 10 at United before with Zlatan as a striker ahead of him and players like Wayne Rooney around him. And he looks sh- shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look like he could, like, 
it's meant to be this. It, God, you know, I feel like Arsenal fans must just be even sat there, just being like exactly like us. <laughs> I, it's it's a weird one. I'd say if you asked like you know five different people what they think Paul Pogba's best position was, you'd probably get five different answers. I don't think anyone. Everyone immediately says the left of a three because it worked at Juventus. Yeah, it worked at Juventus because you had prime Sammy Kadira and Andreas Perlo. Yeah, in was... that midfield, like he doesn't. I'm going on a bit of a rant now. You're getting your rant that you want to... Oh, <laughs> rubbing the pants. <laughs> but he doesn't... He doesn't control games. He needs... He is one of the best players in the world to have in your squad if everyone in, the, in your squad is playing amazingly. But if your team is struggling, he's genuinely one of the worst players in the Premier League to have in your eleven. That's That's quite the statement. Well, he won't... Because he will not... He doesn't rally people. He doesn't, unless everyone is playing amazingly around him, he doesn't control games or ex, quote unquote express himself. Like, so w- what is his value right now? What would you say is his value I, right well, now to United? First of all, there is, oh wait, do, do you mean value isn't how much he'll sell for? No, I just think as oh. a player, what does he, what does he actually bring? I, I, I honestly could not tell you. I've been... For the last, you know, two and a bit years, whatever, since the World Cup, I've been thinking, um, you know, I fall into the trap of going, on his day, he's world class. But, like, when is that day? I haven't seen that day in a very long time. And thinking of Paul Pogba moments in Manchester United, it's it's instantly the derby at the Etihad. And, yeah. I, I like, I don't know, maybe the Europa League win? That's, that's it, really. Yeah, we won the Europa League, and he was a big part of that squad. Uh, and... The, the Manchester derby, obviously, he was amazing in the second half. Like he looked, he looked every bit the player that everyone tells you he is, and yeah. the, or less and less people are telling you that he is. That Mino Raiola tells you he is. <laughs> but right now for United, I I agree with Jamie Carragher, which I hate to do. Ooh. But Barcelona, like if the if Jamie Carragher said, and um. I'm going to be, I'm not going to call this a quote, but this is kind of about what he said. He said, everyone can, most people consider Real Madrid and Barcelona the pinnacle of club football. That is, over. that's not, obviously, some people be screaming, no, it's not. But overall, if you took a poll, that would probably be it. Yeah, it's not, yeah. But if they had the money to buy him, which Barcelona don't and Real Madrid don't, but right now, neither of them are going to touch him because they don't improve the sides. Because he doesn't improve the side. He's just, he's a bit of a headache, isn't he? Is that what we'll, we'll leave him with? Well, I thought I'd get a, bit, a quick bit of Liverpool chat. <laughs> and I'm going to do that thing where, you know, it's not that I'm not listening to you, Nathan, but I'm about to tell you a similar story that involves me <laughs> that's much more interesting. <laughs> Is his name, are you going to tell me the story of, of Philip Coutinho? Well done, well done. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Um, well, obviously, Phil Coutinho... Uh, the, it was the the night before the start of the seventeen eighteen season. We were away at Watford. Uh, he came out and he handed in a transfer request. Said he didn't want to play for the club again. Um, and then he mysteriously had this back injury that I've never heard of before or since. He's never had it at Barcelona. Maybe they've got good, you know, chiropractors there. I'm not sure. But he was left out of a few games by Klopp and. You know, I I actually don't know this for a fact, I'm speculating, but I imagine behind the scenes, they had a bit of a chat, they went, look, if the money's right from Barca, you can go, whenever that is, but while you're here, you know, you're going to have to give it your all, and Klopp, the famous uh, Klopp quote is, you can go to Barcelona and just be another player, or you can stay in Liverpool and be a legend, Mm -hmm. you know, he chose the former, Um, how's that worked out for you, Phil? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, he won the Champions League with Bayern. Oh, he did actually, didn't he? Oh, God. Oh, I've... So what we're saying is that Paul Pogba is going to go to Juventus, flop, get sent out on loan to Bayern Munich and win the Champions League. That's, you just, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, there is a comparison there. The only thing that's really working against Paul Pogba is actually, <clears throat> Philip Coutinho was, what was he then? Was he 25 Ooh. when he left Liverpool? Yeah, 20, yeah 25, yeah. I think Paul Pogba, isn't he 28? He's 27, 28. I swear he's been around again for the last, like, 15 years at this point. And, <laughs> I mean, there's few people in football you should question ever. 
Like, there's few people that you should kind of believe nearly everything they say and take it as gospel. And I think Sir Alex Ferguson is one of those people. And I... Sir Alex Ferguson, back in the day, refused to deal with Mino Raiola when he was Pogba's agent and just sent Pogba packing. Yeah. There is no way in hell Sir Alex Ferguson would have re-signed him. Not in a million years, sure. Didn't he used to play, was it Raphael or Fabio in <laughs> midfield instead of a young Paul Pogba? Yeah, he hated Paul Pogba's attitude. And, and I think a lot of it, and obviously we don't know the guy, like, but I think a lot of it comes from his agent. I think he, obviously his agent has made him a lot of money and mm. given him this kind of facade of a reputation. And it's going to work for him. He's going to get his move. But it's not going to be for the money that his agent wants because no one has that money. And maybe he'll go and prove people wrong. But I think if like, if he's going to go to a squad and play with Cristiano Ronaldo, then, yeah, he's instantly going to look a better player. Yeah. Do you reckon we'll look back now in about two years' time um, and just think, why did Manchester United ever let Paul Pogba go? I don't think anyone will this time because I just think that he's not. He, if he goes on and has an amazing career elsewhere, good for him. Like yeah. it's done wonders for Lukaku. Is playing very. This isn't a dig. I know Inter Milan came bottom of their group, but Lukaku's playing very well for Inter Milan and scoring a lot of goals. Good for him. Like that's great. Go and prove people wrong. But there is a lot of cases, not just in United, but in football history. And Coutinho, I do think, is one of those. Like Barcelona. This is this is why Barcelona have no money because they spent stupid money, and yeah. Coutinho. Coutinho wasn't really. It's kind of like when you let Torres go, you let it, these players go at the exact right time because Torres, when he left Liverpool, yeah. it wasn't the incredible world-beating Torres yeah. of the season before. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even like. Um... You know, people, there's like a misconception that he signed, he was amazing at Liverpool, he was tearing up the league, then he signed for Chelsea and he was just terrible. He wasn't. It was after the World Cup of 2010, he got a bit of a bit of a knock, <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> and um, he came back, you know, Rafa Benitez was gone, um, Roy Hudson was in, <laughs> was in the dugout. And even in uh, Gerard's autobiography, he says, uh, Fernando definitely down to after Rafa left. You know, he just, he, d- he didn't care. Um, and he just, I don't know, maybe, you know, when you have a manager that kind of like believes in you and you believe in as much. Yeah. Is only going to social care that man. <laughs> we'll move on. We'll move on. I think he is just a final thing, on because I do think before we move on, if we talk about Ollie for a second, because we've kind of both said privately that he, he does get a little bit too much stick. Yeah. Like any, and, and part of that, I think, I said to you, I think it's because he doesn't always come across incredibly well in interviews because I don't think, I don't think he quite, and this is going to sound a little bit weird, but obviously he's not, English isn't his first language. And I think sometimes when he is speaking English, he doesn't quite get the nuance of some of it right. And he comes across very blunt. Yeah. (laughs) One of my, one of the best things I heard, sorry, all week was, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer looks like a man who's constantly afraid to answer back to his wife. And I thought that was the best thing I heard all week. I he does. He still has that baby face, doesn't he? Like, he, does, he, he, does. he does look quite grow. He looks like a baby that's been aged up rather than just a human <laughs> aging. That sounds like every 80s movie I've ever watched. Yeah. And, um, so, but there are definitely managers in the Premier League right now that deserve all the stick that Oli gets because he has got some things wrong and it's cost aside. Some of it is down to the players, as we already said, like Maguire and De Gea's cock up. And But more often than not this season, he's getting things pretty much bang on. Yeah, well, the home form in the league has been a bit suspect. It has a little bit, but he's still, he's still getting results like... And he is, uh, he is winning away from home. He is, yeah. Like, we're on this weird un, uh, winning streak of in league games only, obviously. Uh, but we're on this weird <laughs> winning streak. And I do think he does have the comeback mentality. I think when we were under Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho, if we went one down, you were near, and, near enough as a fan, you began to just give up and go, well, we've lost. 
Yeah. You didn't believe it. The Louis Van Gaal, there was the famous streak of nil nils at half time at Old Trafford, where we wouldn't ba- basically not have a shot the entire half. But he has kind of brought back that, well, we're going one down. We're still going to bloody win this. Yeah. And I think, in fairness to Ollie, he came, you know, he came in on the back of Jose Mourinho. It was, you know, you weren't in a great position at the time. I think he's definitely left you in a much better place than uh, he took you up initially. Mm. I think I think he's been a good interim manager, but again, I just don't think he's I the think, long-term solution. I think, and I'm going to put my cards on the table here, and I'm going to take any flack I get, Ooh. if United tomorrow moved Oli on, I think it would be a good way to end. Ooh. I that's... would be pretty happy with it. I think, like, I think look, 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 Oli. We'll always have that night in Paris. Well, uh, and we'll have the rerun you know. as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got two nights in Paris. But, night. Like, a great, yeah. a true love story in yeah, the city think, of love. I, I, don't, I don't believe he's going to win us anything major. No, like even again, pulling it back to Liverpool, um, <laughs> Kenny <laughs> Dalglish came in. You know, it was a very, very bad time for the club oh, when he you took are over. Horrible under Dalglish. <laughs> it was what? Well, nah, no. Nah, I think again. I think maybe not a misconception, but I think Dalglish gets a bit of unnecessary stick as well because he took over from Roy Hodgson. We were, I think, like sixteenth in like January, which is never a good sign when you're Liverpool. No, and. He took over. He ended up. We ended up finishing sixth in his first half season, and then the following season we won the Carling Cup against Cardiff. Um, you know, Oof. and um, we got to an FA Cup final that we lost to Chelsea, but we did finish eighth, and it's our worst league position mm. in Premier League history. But again, for at the time, they they kind of lift they kind of lift the club. It's a bit of a you know everyone's a bit down. A legend comes in, kind of cheers you back up. Mm. But you need you need a Jurgen Klopp. We need, like, everyone... Look, Pochettino's the obvious one. I think Pochettino, I think Allegri as well is a proven winner yeah. as well. That would be great. Um, look, I I love the idea that that there's a long-term vision. I like that. I think that's great. A lot of clubs don't have that. They were pretty much... Like, some clubs are definitely run week to week. Like, I like the fact that Ed is coming out saying, no, there is a plan here. There's a plan based around the summer transfer windows. We are going to be investing the ideas. Like the idea is beautiful, but I don't. Maybe he'll grow it. Maybe this is how some fans felt when Sir Alex Ferguson first came in. Like although yeah. he had a bit more pedigree for his time at Aberdeen, like uh, like. They always say that mm. City game he lost, mm. they lose like a ridiculous amount. Wow, well, like Sir Alex nearly got fired and everything. And it's yeah. maybe this is how they felt, but I think it's probably time to to end the the story and yeah. just buy a centre half. Well, we we need to we need to go into that Man City game, but I'll just wrap it up with Nathan. Thoughts on the Europa League back at Old Trafford? <laughs> no, let's win it. Why not? We won it a few <laughs> seasons ago. Look, we're we're in it go. now. We're in it now. I, I 100% agree with Jose. I don't think we should be in it. I don't yeah. think we should. I don't think for, that's a completely different conversation for another podcast. But I absolutely do not think third place should drop into the Europa League. I think this is why the Europa League is seen as kind of an afterthought. Yeah. Because you just got all the losers in it now. And um, look, we're in it. Let's try and win it. If if we win it, brilliant. If it's one of those trophies, where if you win it, it's the biggest thing for that five minutes. And if you lose it, eh, it's only the Europa League. Yeah, well, not if you're a Liverpool fan in Sevilla, but uh, you know, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not over that. But as you said earlier on, we're just off the back of the Manchester Derby, uh, one of the most exciting Manchester derbies I can remember in years. Uh, so oh, yes. many attempts. It was. I thought it was a very boring game, Nathan. <laughs> It was very boring. Uh, we look, coming off, licking our wounds a little bit, and uh, we look a hell of a lot more composed. Weirdly, we aren't we aren't the possession side that Man City is supposed to be, uh, but we look composed. We looked in the game. Uh, if I will say that if we had Cavani fully fit up front, we would have won. 
I don't think I don't think you're wrong at all. I think I completely I agree with you. The first half. I think look, Mason Greenwood is kind of a tricky conversation uh, at the minute because of things that have happened in his personal life this season. He's not banging on bang on form, although he has scored recently. Uh, but and, and Rashford isn't a number nine. He's a winger who was playing kind of through the middle. Uh, the diamond looked good. Uh, I think Pogba looked good. I think McSauce looked up for the up for the game. I love him just every time Sterling touched the ball, just fucking clattering the guy. <laughs> no, no, sorry, um, sorry, not clattering the guy, lightly brushing the man, <laughs> stamping on the. Uh, stamping but I on. think uh, the city, the city players. My God, like it's lucky it wasn't too windy, or they would have been on their backs the entire time. I know. Oof falling at the, at the slightest touch but i think we were up for the game city weren't they look i think they looked a little bit crap yeah one thing i want to say i'm sure we'll get on to pep Guardiola on another another show but it, it's his team is sort of um starting to remind me of you know wenger towards the last few years when he was bringing in like all these you know there were good players on the ball nice dribble nice good dribbling nice passing on them but you know, you want like you want a Yaya Torre, you want a Vincent Company that's just a big, powerful, you know, mm. player who can just drive you to to wins. I think the city players are too sort of um too too fancy. I think that's that's what they were hoping Rodri was gonna be. And, I'm not a fan uh, of him at all. No, I'm not. I think he he I don't see really what he he has a bit of steel. Look, he's a big guy, but I think if you're going to compare him to a Man United player, like he's quite comparable in a way to either a McTominay because of the, they're both pretty big, or Matic. I think Matic, in kind of in the cameos that he tends to make now and then, looks more composed and better than Rodri does at breaking up the play. I think yeah. Fernandinho is still the best player in City squad at that, and I do think Fernandinho is an outstanding player still. Yeah, and uh, but. Yeah, Rod, I don't understand Rodri, but I think you're right. They don't have that player willing them on. And I think even, for us... Sorry, without Aguero, sorry, without Aguero as well. He's another player who, you know, he's not the biggest player in the world, but he, he will drag you to to winning games and trophies. Yeah, and I think defensively we look pretty great. I know I slagged off Luke Shaw earlier, but as I said earlier as well, he actually played really well today at left yeah, back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, McSauce, I was right. I messaged Dara about nine o'clock this morning and said McSauce is going to run riot. He didn't run riot, but he had a great game. <laughs> Actually, you know, that goal he scored against City last season, probably oh, probably the goal I have <laughs> celebrated the most. That wasn't a Liverpool goal in my life. <laughs> that was a great one. And uh, I just think up up top, Rashford and Greenwood didn't have the greatest of days. And um, Martial, when he came on, he, he wasn't firing on all cylinders. I think we dominated the match as much as you as we could have uh we had a couple of chances in the last few minutes when bruno had that shot i bit for that i thought it was going to fly straight in as soon as he kicked it yeah <laughs> it had that it had the run all over it didn't it <laughs> oh, i had that nice twang on it and i think we kept uh maguire i thought it was actually pretty outstanding yeah like, I, thought, I thought it was very good as well if he just if he scored one of the like you know set from one of the set pieces would have been a perfect game from him Oh, he had a couple of headers. Lindelof had one header as well in the first half where he peeled away from whoever was marking him. Like, yeah. they weren't even there. And, <laughs> and uh, but, I mean, I just wish we had somebody on the bench that would have just grabbed the game to, in attack, and I'm talking attack here. Um, but Martial has obviously been uh, injured or sick or whichever. We just, if we had Cavani, we would have won. Well, you know, you've got Jesse Lingard. Get him a trilby. Get him to moonwalk onto the pitch. Was he on the bench? And he will. I don't remember. He wasn't the light <laughs> game. I, did, I didn't double check him, to be honest. Um, we we finished it off with Nathan. What would you, up until now, what would you rate your season out of 10? Uh, instant reaction was six and a half. A little above average. <laughs> a little above average. Uh, for For where we've been, I think, the project is that Ed seems to insist that we're on this long-term vision. I think we are a better side than we were last season. I think Bruno, Fern although Bruno Fernandes is indispensable. Yeah. Uh, I think we, we need to sort the Pogba situation out, preferably in January 
whilst he's got the if we're going to sell him for cash whilst he's got the most value and we i think we need a center half to play alongside Maguire or Lindelof that is of a different sort of caliber yeah do you think if, Maguire Lindelof is a partnership do you think that's going forward uh are you looking forward to that or would you change it if i had the option to change it it's one is people uh, our friends always say that they're not good enough but who's a, who is realistically because obviously football fans tend to just go well just sign ramos but like <laughs> realistically who's available and and better and that's the question that a lot of people just struggle and look Kulabali is the obvious one there's a price tag on him but are United going to pay 70 million quid for a 30 year old? Yeah, no, that would be, that would be, look, everyone would then instantly start laughing at us. Like, yeah. so his age, unfortunately. So it's that thing of who's available and better. And there's Saul at Bayern Munich. I think that's how pronounce his name right, but his injury record lately is atrocious. And there was some interview where he said he was a United fan as a kid. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's made up. I don't even know if he's available. Like I'm just spitballing, but yeah. his injury record is—he missed nearly all the last season, and he's not been playing. I don't even think he's playing at the minute. I, I would need to check the lineup from earlier today, but yeah. So who? i throw, throw it to you. Who's available and better? Oh well, it's I'm I'm okay because I've got you know Van Dijk and Gomez <laughs> waiting to come back any day now. No, it's you know obviously it's a very tough question. Um. I don't. It's it's tough. It's tough. I think I think one of them. I think one of them could work, but mm. I I don't know. I yeah. I don't think you should get rid of the two of them. I think you should keep one of them. They're good Which, players. What I think. I think it it have to be Maguire you keep as well, won't it? Because you can't you can't be selling a whatever an eighty million centre back no. like eighteen months after you've signed him, can you? Well, look if if you want to be ruthless and you can, but United aren't that sort of club, like. No. I just rack my bra- brains now. I think that Barcelona, obviously, I keep bringing them up and they need money, is how test their resolve on um, how do you put, uh, the, the French one, Lenglet, however you say his name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could test test his their resolve on him. I've not really seen him play too often, so I don't know if he's an upgrade or not. But it's a tough question to ask because they are, although Maguire in particular has had some right ball-ups this season, they're still good good Premier League defenders. Yeah. Now clean sheet record isn't like it's not it's not awful. You, the the six one obviously against Spurs is a massive anomaly. Yeah. Um that was a battering but outside of that we're not not conceding uh we're not conceding enough to be worried. And obviously we kept City quiet earlier today. But uh, you did know. you see did you like Fred's little pirouette at one point? I did, I did. I thought that was, I thought that was very nice. I yeah. thought I, I instantly like felt felt bad because I I saw him do a pirouette and I was like, oh shit, it was Rashford. And I realized, oh no, it was Fred. <laughs> very Zidane esque. <laughs> yeah, I was like, my god, <laughs> what's yeah. got into the guy? You know, what I'm will we will we wrap it up with my unique peak at the week, and then I'll give you a trivia question uh, for the week. That sound let's good to you? Let's, let's do this. Um. You know, first one's about the Champions League, just because, you know, I can I can say it. Uh, <laughs> don't have to. I can book things for Thursday nights, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you picking for? <laughs> That's um, what I'm more interested lock, in. Lockdown's over, you know, I, I'm just going to spread my wings. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay, <laughs> let me get into this. Um, why don't players sing the Champions League theme like it's the national anthem? <laughs> no one knows the words. That's a very good point, actually. Do you know it? It was you, made um, up. You're a uh, you're a Peter Crouch podcast fan, aren't you? I'm a huge, huge fan. Yeah. Yeah. So so am I. So am I. I love it. We, obviously, we we want to have Crouchy on one day, but uh, <laughs> that's the dream. Do you like it when he did it with Crouch Fest? And yeah. Got, um. Oh shit! And, and her name's just gone out of my head. I've no idea. Was it Charlotte? <laughs> it wasn't Charlotte Church, was it? I have no idea. I don't. I didn't know oh, who she well, was. They got her out to sing the national anthem. The national anthem. It might as well be the Champions League <laughs> <On> football. <laughs> yeah. My favorite bit about all that is that the Champions League team. You know, it's this big like orchestral anthemic you know song. 
it was created by a book named Tony, which I just found really yeah, funny for some reason. That was really funny. My God, the residuals on that every year must be, he must be living large. Oh, he's up there with, um, it's a Michael Buffer with royalties, surely. Oh, God. Or oh, Mariah Carey every year making about 12 million off All I Want for Christmas. If you ever see the like the YouTube analytics for like the entire year, it's like literally like zero zero zero, and then once you get to November, it just like spikes. It's ridiculous. Uh, Number one in the UK this week for the first time in the song's history. Serious? Mm-hmm. That's mental. That is crazy. I, I yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't add anything <laughs> onto that. Um, we'll go with we'll go. With, I thought this could be a fun little game. Translating football cliches for dummies. Um, I've actually used a few of them in this show, so that's never a good sign. Uh, the first one I'll go with is, he's changed the culture at the club. Now, Nathan, this this is usually used when a new manager is taken over at a club. Uh, he's getting slated every week because the results and the performances are terrible. Uh, but, you know, a defender of this manager can play this wild card. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything, uh, but okay. it always gets you out of jail for free. It is completely and utterly meaningless because... A, no, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this is it. Where it comes from is that every club believes that they have this core identity. West Ham fans are yeah, awful for exactly. this. Yeah. The West Ham way. We don't play football the West Ham way. <laughs> no one can tell you what that is. But right. you get someone in like David Moyes who's going to play the West Ham way and watch the results change. And you go, <laughs> they're not playing any differently. But every football fan, and we, us included, we're, we're, no, we're no saints for this. We'll have an idea in our head of what is playing like Man United or what is playing like Liverpool. I know. And when I think of playing like Liverpool, the two in my head I've got is Rafa Benitez football and Jurgen Klopp football. Could not be more contrasting ways, in my opinion. Oh, the instantly in my head, all that happens is, right, we have wingers as wide as humanly possible and a nine who will make runs into the box. That's United way. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Chalk on your boots. Uh, uh, this one I used today to describe Paul Pogba on his day he's world class uh, first of all I, I hope so because if he's a professional footballer I hope he's good on his day whatever that means uh, this will tend to be used when your club has made a big money signing who has shown all the end product of Jose Altidore at Sunderland <laughs> yeah pretty much it's, it's a way of defending a player that you like yeah, or a- actually um, retracting on a massive insult as it was earlier when you, you'll be I'll be there and I'll be like oh, Paul Pogba's this but you know on his day he's outstanding <laughs> and all it means is occasionally they will show glimpses of brilliance or when you just have no idea what they add to the team you'll just use that and it's oh, just yeah. it's another get out of jail card it's isn't like, it? yeah it, it's really, it's really <laughs> funny because you're reading these and I didn't know he was doing it. He genuinely p- prepares these bits without my knowledge. <laughs> and I'm just thinking the amount of times I say these things. <laughs> and now this is, this is the last of the cliches. Then we'll, we'll have a little Christmas one to wrap it up on because, you know, festive, festive feelings. <laughs> um, this is, I love this one. Uh, he's a clever little player, isn't he? Uh, usually <laughs> said by football fans, he's watched about two games all season. Uh, usually used to describe a foreign player who can dribble past a man and can play a pass more than five yards. You know when else this is used? It's when, and I I hate that this is one of my least favourite things in all of footballdom. And we'll, when we actually have to make these during a transfer window, it's going to come, it's going to, my rage for it will come out, is when your club signs someone that, A, you've never heard of Costa in Simicus. your life. Yeah, I had no idea who that guy was. <laughs> and, um, but you'll get fans going like, "Oh, you know, he, he's great. He's a real clever little player." We've just signed there from from Villarreal. No offense to Villarreal, but like Tony from up the town, don't watch Villarreal, do they? <laughs> like he's got no idea who this guy is. And the, one of the worst cl- fans for this, and I'm calling them out, are Arsenal fans. Because it's every summer they'll sign someone. This season it was Thomas Party, and yeah. they'll all be singing their his praises. All they've watched is a two minute compilation of some passes on YouTube. I love those <laughs> they videos. Decided he's the best player of all time, <laughs> and then look at you, yeah, fifteenth. <laughs> Great party time, wasn't it? <laughs> But that is another time where people you hear people call him clever little player. 
brilliant. <laughs> the Christmas one I'll, I'll wrap up on. Um, I don't know. You just you know, we'll go with it. We'll see what you think. Um, obviously the Christmas ads are starting to be shown on TV. Well, they have been for the last like I swear six months. But um, the one I always think of when I think of Christmas is Coca Cola. That's the that's the main Christmas ad, isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah. But Nathan, I cannot think of when I think of drinking the Coke. It's always, you know, summer, you know, at the, well, maybe not at the beach, but <laughs> I don't know, just out in the sun, drinking a Coke with some ice. Oh, you're, you're making a fool of yourself right here, Dar. So why is it associated with Christmas? I think it's probably the worst time to have it all year. Ladies and gentlemen, accompanying me whilst we record this podcast is a glass of Coke. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it's the 12th of December. <laughs> <laughs> no, I must say I'm not a rich man, so it's not official Coca-Cola. It is the knockoff 79.2p two liter bottle from across the road at the Premier. But, <laughs> if they're watching, if they're watching Premier, get in, get in, get in on the sponsorship. Um, yeah, I don't know actually. To, to be fair, you're right because I also would mostly now. I just needed a bit of an energy boost before this podcast and I didn't feel like having any more proper caffeine because it's quite late here um, at the time of recordings. But other than that, yeah, it is generally it's designed to be a cold beverage. Like yeah, winter is an awful time for that. I think it's just an advertising masterclass. Very Leicester City with Harry Maguire. Uh, <laughs> will we? Will, I'll wrap it up. Well, I, think, I think the real the real answer to this is that Santa traditionally wears red, and that's the color of Coke. That's true. Is that is that because of Coke? I think that's an urban myth. Now, yeah. a really easy Google would find the answer to that, but I'm t- <laughs> I'm very lazy. <laughs> I'm very tired. You know, it's past my bedtime. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll wrap it up with the trivia question for the week. Okay. Uh, which striker has scored in all of these competitions? The Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two, Conference, FA Cup, League Cup, Scottish Premiership, Scottish Cup, Scottish League Cup, Europa League, and Champions League. That is your homework Ooh. for the week. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your homework for the week. And that is us done for this very United centered podcast. Hopefully, my ranting. <laughs> Sorry about that. Too, I'll, I'll change angry. that next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll change it. Next week, we'll do something more interesting. Um, we, we'll see. You know what? If Liverpool lose to Fulham tomorrow, oh, uh, which seems un, unspeakable to possibly even happen, we will do a Liverpool centered episode you know, again. Just- the thing is, it because of obviously the running joke with Fulham on this show, that's why I'm oh so terrified. Oh my god, I forgot they they lost last weekend as well. And I completely forgot. You know what? So shit, I can't even remember them. <laughs> there it is. Where did the right only the good end. thing about Fulham is have you seen all the edits for Scott Parker's post match interviews behind like gangster music? <laughs> I haven't. No, I haven't oh, looked he, that up. He talks at a really weird rhythm. Like he'll talk and then he'll suddenly do oh, speak really quickly. <laughs> I did. I did see that. I did. I saw one of them. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh it, they're outstanding. But thank you very much for listening, guys. Uh, as always, you can find me at Nathan Greenaway. Find Project Dits at Project Dits D I T S. Uh, if you want to hear more from me, not talking football, but generally talking movies, or uh, or actually, I've got to do. Interestingly, I've got to do a watch along next week uh, over at Rogue Opinions at Rogue Underscore Opinions of some wrestling nonsense. Uh, so come over if you want to join in on that fun. Uh, but Dara, where can people find you and what you got going on? Um, well, again, like always, Twitter hasn't changed. You should know by now. Uh, Gibbons underscore Dara, D- Gibbons underscore D-A-R-R-A-G-H. Um, that's that's about it for me. <laughs> oh, well, guys, if you've got any thoughts of the week that you want to send to us, uh, do send them along to Project Dits or to our personal Twitters. And uh, we'll, we'll, answer, we'll answer your football life uh life questions but i like that i like that otherwise guys enjoy enjoy the weekend uh, stay safe stay festive and we'll be back next week bye guys look